Good evening and welcome. I am Juan Edgel Jr. And a big thank you to all those persons that are joining us for this, our last program for 2019. And I'm Louis Baldwin. Uh, right off, let me just say thank you to all of those viewers who have joined us throughout the past, throughout the year, actually, uh, several months that we've been on here. Um, we thank you very much for tuning in every week religiously and listening to um, us discuss yes. matters of national importance and that um, issues that Guyanese hold dear and shedding more light on issues uh, coming out of the current administration and highlighting what they have been doing over the years. Um, so as always, um, and as promised la last week, we'd like to start right at the beginning with GCOM. So <clears throat> GCOM met um, Monday, Tuesday, and there was a press conference uh, today at, at 11 to 12. Now, some very important decisions were made at yesterday's statutory meeting of the commission. Um, as you may be aware or may not be aware, on Friday, GCOM released to the political parties the list of possible new registrants, which contained over 20,000 um, possible new registrants, uh, which the PPP immediately began scrutinizing. Now, over the weekend, the PPP would have found multiple persons that are on that list um, as duplicates. Um, one very infamous um, example that was published on the party's Facebook page and other leaders of the party highlighting it as well on their Facebook pages was uh, the name of the former Chancellor of the Judiciary, wow. Cecil Kennard, <laughs> who is, um, I believe, almost 90 years old now and would have registered a very, very long very time ago long, and, voted, long time and ago. voted in all the national and regional elections in Guyana. He was listed as a possible new registrant. There are also instances of dead people that were found on that list of possible new registrants, as well as a whole host of other discrepancies. Uh, these were highlighted uh, by the People's Progressive Party flagged and taken back to the commission, which there was an emergency meeting on Monday. Uh, the chairperson of GCOM listened to both sides. Of course, the PP would have provided evidence in black and white, documented evidence yes. of this in black and white, and argued their case that there needs to be a hundred percent verification. And clearly so. Clearly, based on based on the findings. Exactly. Clearly so. Yeah. And of course, the government nominated commissioners were arguing against this. That oh, we should only have a ten percent verification of twenty plus thousand persons that are possible new registrants. Uh, the chairperson undertook to give a decision yeah. on Tuesday at the statutory meeting, which she did. And for those of you who may not know or have been keeping up to date with what transpired there. She voted in favor of 100% verification yes. with the three opposition nominated commissioners, the three PPP nominated commissioners, while the government nominated commissioners voted against this process. Now, it's very important that we have a clean list for elections. Yes, it's and very important. it baffled me that the government nominated commissioners or the government themselves, that this is their position. Yes. That they, they keep saying that they want a credible list. Uh, you recall that uh, it was the president himself saying that the list is bloated. Uh, we cannot go to elections with such a list that we need to clean it up and launch the house. The house to start it, which um, they had other intentions, which was followed by the um, yeah. high court. But it's the opinion of, of many Guyanese, I think, mm -hmm. Rudy, that um, the, the reasoning behind voting against such a process mm -hmm. that it clearly would have benefited the list the mm -hmm. final list yes. um, is that uh, the coalition government is still trying to stall the elections. Exactly. Right? They're mm -hmm. not only trying to stall it, but to, to, but maybe mm -hmm. to find a loophole. Because remember the Esperera case that we would have been arguing uh, before in months mm -hmm. in months gone that you know they're looking to have uh, a list that is not so good and to disenfranchise one person and then to have mm -hmm. them go to court and to probably nullify the entire election. Exactly. But you know the PPP is really towing the line here mm -hmm. by ensuring that 
throughout each and every step of the way, you know, we're verifying to ensure that each and every Guyanese citizen mm -hmm. has the opportunity to vote on March 2nd, 2020. Exactly. That is the important thing, exactly. that once you're 18 years old, mm -hmm. right, you have that opportunity to vote when you enter that polling booth. Exactly. You know, and clearly this process is, is the right way to go, to Definitely. ensure that that happens. Mm -hmm. One would have thought that they would have been in favor of this, yeah. but of course because this, that's is, this not was the their case. position. <laughs> yes. This was their position mm -hmm. at first, mm -hmm. you know, but now we, we more and more we're seeing clearly what they're trying to do, which is to stall the election and, exactly. and to you know, ensure that... And to have a list that is not 100% accurate exactly. as well, so that you know, right. for whatever purposes they want that. Um, so very importantly, from Friday, uh, a list of 20,000 plus mm -hmm. has now been whittled down to 16,371. Okay. Those uh, other numbers, uh, GCOM, the IT department there did their investigations uh, based on evidence provided by the PPP, and they would have found um, the 4,000 odd persons as double registrants on the list. Now, mind you, at Friday's actuary meet, at Friday's meeting, the the secretariat was adamant that they have already done this on the list of 20,000, and there's no duplicates. It's, it's impossible. That is until the PPP took the list and did the due diligence. Uh, at this juncture, I'd just like to say that it, it is clear uh, to every Guyanese that it's only the PPP that's fighting at the Guyanese Elections Commission for free and fair elections. Um, there is some 19 political parties that submitted symbols, yes. of which 14 are new parties. Um, as you know, January 10th is Nominations Day. Yes, so they're expected to have 19 political parties by, uh, in those elections. and. It's, it's truly sad there's only the PPP that is fighting for free and fair elections and fighting for no, no one to be disenfranchised but, at elections. But, but Rudy, you, you did jog my memory, but mm -hmm. this is the history that the PPP has been fighting since its existence. Mm -hmm. Fighting to ensure that, you know, Guyanese, it doesn't matter if you're a PPP supporter, you support the TUF, APNU, PNC, PNCR1, G, or whatever, whatever political party you supported. Mm -hmm. The PPP has always had this, this principle of ensuring that you know, credible free, free, free and fair elections occurred in Guyana, mm -hmm. ensuring that Guyanese had the opportunity to cast their votes. Definitely. And this, this is a position that will continue mm -hmm. into the future as well, ensuring that everyone gets the opportunity to vote. Exactly. So our viewers can be assured that the party is continuing to closely monitor this process. You know, a number of people are still worried about rigged elections mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. And so forth. we'll come to that, the observers yeah. and so on okay. a little later. But I just want to say that, you know, this is the commitment of the party to just mm -hmm. ensure that the list is verified, ensuring yes. that everything is cross-checked and, and, you know, mm -hmm. they will know for the best. Um, as it stands to getting an official list of electors for yeah. the elections, which is in March 2020, uh, Earlier in the month, GCOM would have announced that on um, <clears throat> January 5th, they will be publishing the revised list of electors. Now, the revised list of electors would contain those 18 and above extracted from the National Register of Registrants mm -hmm. and also contain persons who would have done transactions or whatever transactions were done during the claims and objections period. Okay. And as I would understand it now, uh, the, after the verification purpose is done, this 100% verification of 16,371 persons, mm -hmm. whatever remains of that will also be added to the RLE and published for scrutiny, scrutiny. as well. Um, the, the registration, the verification exercise of these possible new registrants will last for a period of um, I think six days. Uh, it's, it's ex it was supposed to start today. I'm not 100% sure whether the GCOM had people in the fields, but I am aware that they met with scrutineers, they met with the field yeah. officers, and they would have briefed them as to what uh, work they need to be doing and what they need to be looking for. Um, this exercise ends on Sunday, December the 22nd, 2019. So when this exercise is finished, we'll then um, hopefully have an RLE by January 5th, 2020. From that, we'll have um, Nominations Day, which is set for January 10th, 2020. Yes. Um, Day. More importantly, um, the other issue that remains at GCOM is the persons who have not lift, uplifted their national identification cards. Mm -hmm. um, we spoke about there's some 18,000 persons who would not who did not uplift their identification card from 2008 onwards. 
um, to 2019, um, the commission has not decided what they will be doing with these persons as yet. They have, they, the media reported that the uh, commission wanted to create a supplementary official list of electors. However, the chairperson today at her press conference said that that is not the position. They have not taken any decision. Okay. However, they have undertaken to meet next Tuesday, uh, that, that is uh, Christmas Eve day, Christmas December Eve. the 24th, wow. and um, a lot of decisions are also expected to be made there, and a lot of issues are expected to be addressed at that forum. Um, in regards to the international observers, um, one was speaking and, uh, you know, the genuine fear of persons of having rigged elections in Guyana. Um, the international observers from the Commonwealth Secretariat will be here in, um, in Guyana in January 2020. The former um, elections official from Canada will also be in Guyana will be back in Ghana actually in uh, January of 2020. So um, these are some of the confirmed observers and other help that yeah. the commission has well, been well, receiving. I saw one news, report, one news report said today that we would re be receiving experts from Ghana and India mm -hmm. uh, for the next elections and I, I thought that that was something very positive mm -hmm. to look forward to. The more experts, the more professionals that are part of these elections, the better the more likelihood of having free and fair elections. Yes, yeah, so we also know that the, um, the Carter Center has already been accredited. Yes. Um, the OAS has also already been accredited as election observers. So in the coming um, year, in early January, maybe February, we'll begin to see a lot more uh, foreigners here and being involved in the elections process and what's going on at GCOM. Excellent. You know, with January 10, 2020 named as the Nominations Day, the full version of the PPPC's manifesto uh, will be launched soon. Mm -hmm. You know, we had just the excerpts Excerpt, that, yeah. that were launched, mm -hmm. but the full version will be available soon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, if you do not have a copy, I want to urge viewers out there to be, be sure to pick up this week's Mirror newspaper. You'll have the uh, PPPC's excerpt in, the, in that uh, version of the Mirror. Uh, to really read about the PPPC's plans for prosperity for all Guyanese. And, and some of these things, they touch on the cost of living and welfare for our people. Mm -hmm. You know, the manifesto has within it the reversal of, of more than 200 taxes, licenses, and fees. Um, you know, and that will be completely reversed. You know, the reinstitution of the 10,000 cash grant for our children. The removal um, of VAT on water. The electricity. removal, <laughs> excellent. The removal of VAT on, on water and electricity, which, which were all burdens that were added to, to the Guyanese people, you mm -hmm. know, and cost of living has really gone up for everyone in every sector. Uh, yeah. The businessman, the young professional, even the senior citizen who used yeah. to receive the subsidy before, their cost of living has also skyrocketed. Yes. You know, so ev no one has been untouched by this government when it comes to cost of living. And the BBC will plan to reduce the cost of living when it gets back into power. You know, it also speaks about uh, reviving the economy because we know that business has really been depleted. You know, we spoke about the firing of, uh, of, more, of nearly 2,000 CSOs in the Amarindian community and how 800 million Ghana dollars were lost over those years in those communities and how businesses have been affected. And also, we, you know, the manifesto speaks about the productive sectors. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I think you touched on that a little bit, Rudy. Yeah, last um, week. Reopening up the sugar estates the sugar, yeah. in, in uh, mm -hmm. the sugar industry and how, you know, rice and all the rest of it. Well, the plants, uh, I think that's a very important one now, seeing as that the farmers on the Esquibo coast are facing flooding. Yes. And, um, and it's all because of negligence. The pump stations there were out of fuel. Yeah. And uh, the, the REO um, recently, you know, oh, I have no comments, I have nothing to say about it. Uh, that kind of attitude, the unbothered attitude, as I like to call it, um, from this government, as a result of that, our rice farmers are currently suffering on the Esquibo coast. Now, rest assured that the PPPC has a plan for all, whether you yes. work in the agricultural sector, whether you work in the private sector, whether you work in the public sector, whether you're a nurse, you're a teacher, or you're just a housewife. It, the eight-page excerpt that uh, one is speaking about encapsulate everyone and everything. Um, as it relates specifically to the productive sector, there's um, their promises to uh, invest more in training for rice farmers, yes. in um, in building more farm-to-market roads for the farmers in both cash crop and um, rice area. And communities. also finding markets for yeah. them. You know, we, we spoke on that mm -hmm. as well because 
uh, you know, we need to, once we're producing, we need to ha ensure that we have the, the lucrative markets for our farmers mm -hmm. and so on to find so they can get an income. You know, those are all things that are lacking right now, I would say. You know, mm -hmm. there's no push, there's no uh, drive to ensure that we find these markets and getting our products out there. And, and mm -hmm. that is something that is really lacking under this government. You know, yeah. one thing that I, that I really liked about the manifesto is the way that it uh, ties and links the productive sector with the oil sector. Mm -hmm. Because um, you would feel that the coalition government feel as if everything is revolving around oil, and oil would be the savior, mm -hmm. and the productive sector can sink. You know, and they've, they've mm -hmm. completely forgotten about, about the productive sector and how it has really taken and stabilized this economy over the years. Mm -hmm. you know, but the PPPC's manifesto speaks about linking the productive sector. You know, yes, we're giving support to the oil sector. Yes, we, know we, will, we will ensure that we have the Santiago principles and so on enforced in the oil sector. We use the income to generate and you know, to, to stabilize the other sectors in our, in our economy. But the productive sector will also receive attention from the government. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like if we, all of our attention will be focused towards oil. Well, we can't all work in the oil industry. Well, <laughs> that, so that, that is, that we is have true. To create other jobs for people elsewhere. And um, using the revenue earned from the oil industry and investing it in the productive sectors as well as infrastructure and other um, areas is something that is promised by the PPP. Yes, you know, and um, also another thing which is which is major in the PPPC's uh, manifesto is the creation of jobs. Yes. Now, I was in Linden yesterday, Rudy, mm -hmm. and one thing that people were saying as we walked through the markets, um, if I can use the, the quote-unquote, we ain't got jobs. Mm -hmm. We ain't getting no mm -hmm. jobs around here, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Things tough. I write about five applications, one young lady tell me. Mm -hmm. She ain't getting no response there. Wow. So... You know, that is the situation with a lot of young people. They're sending out their applications, but they're not receiving any feedback. Many of them are qualified. They have mm -hmm. degrees, they have master's degrees, uh, they have a lot of certificates. Some are very technically sound, but they're not getting any feedback. And this is because the government's approach to employment has been, okay, uh, go sell some cook-up rice mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, and there, there hasn't been this, this I would say, <laughs> Uh, interest in our young people you know we were, talk interest. we were talking yeah. about that they'll be in Linden tomorrow but mm -hmm. we, we did speak about that on our last program yeah. <laughs> what exactly they're going to talk to the youths of Linden about uh, when they have basically forsaken them for four plus years mm -hmm. you know I hope some of those same youths that um, you spoke yes, with I there I would so. be there. I'm, I'm and hoping so, that they go out there and ask them yeah. the hard questions. I hope they get the opportunity to because, yes. you know, um, the president, when he goes anywhere, well, uh, Mr. Granger, when he goes anywhere, he's always uh, protected and the, the barricades and everything and the intimidation of the normal youth. So I hope that there's an opportunity at this forum for the young people to ask the hard questions. They have like to speak said. their minds. They, yeah. have to, they have to ask why, why the call center is closing down. They have to mm -hmm. ask... You know, why haven't there been more of their involvement in the government system? I'm really hoping that the young people go out there and they ask these tough questions too. Definitely. To those, to they those should leaders. confront the, um, Mr. Granger. He was the one that promised free university, tertiary education. Yes. He also promised that as soon as you finish um, university. university, you would have a job within three months. And then he returned to the youths and then cursed them saying that, oh, the reason why you don't have a job is because you're liming by the Guinness bar and drinking. And oh, you should go and sell cook up at the market or sell planting chips. Yeah. Now, this, this is totally unacceptable from any heads of, head of state in any part of the war. Totally, totally unacceptable. And, um, yeah, one well, as you were saying, that the PP has a plan to create jobs. They have plan promised 50,000 50, new jobs. New jobs. Uh, everyone knows we've already lost 30,000-plus jobs in this uh, four or five years already under the coalition government. So 50,000 new jobs are promised, as well as the reopening of the sugar estates, the one that are available to be opened as you all know the whales the situation whales being sold out and the secret deals going on with yeah. nissil uh, involving the land and so forth and so on yeah so uh, one way you know you will stimulate jobs mm -hmm. in the sector is the construction industry and you know we will focus then again because we have to distribute house lots mm -hmm. but then you know young 50, people 50,000 yes 50,000 mm -hmm. house lots young people in particular one of the things w that they say when you talk to them what is the, what is the main thing that you're looking forward to from a government Man, I just want a land. That, mm -hmm. that is it. Mm -hmm. I just want a land. I, I just want a space 
so I can I can start up my life. I just want the opportunity so I can get things kick started. Definitely. You know, young people don't don't only need handouts. Mm -hmm. You know, young people just want to have an opportunity to start their lives. You know, and then when they have the tools in their hand, they can begin building their futures. Definitely, they can start opening up businesses, mm -hmm. which will help with our employment issue. You take that same piece of land and you go yes. to the bank and then you get a loan, the investment. Exactly. And you see, and that those are all ways that you know the economy can be stimulated and things can get kick kick started again. It's true. While this government keeps saying that, oh, we want you to become entrepreneurs, they have provided no means for which for you to do that by. Uh, for example, uh, if you're going to go to the bank, what are you going to go with them with? You're going to go and say, oh, look, I just graduated from the University of Guyana. Mm -hmm. uh, give me five million dollars. It does not work like that. The government work. needs to be front and foremost in helping to create jobs, create employment opportunities by um, keeping the economy moving. Yeah. So, so despite all that we've mentioned here in, in the PPPC's manifesto, this eight-page manifesto, and the full version to be launched soon, mm -hmm. uh, we still do not have a manifesto from the ruling fallen coalition <laughs> government. They have mm -hmm. still not released a version of their manifesto. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, practically they're they're busy running around with the new Cummings Board Accord. Mm. They're you know, they're basically fighting, fighting for the spoils of yeah. an office that they haven't gotten. Who yet. gets <laughs> what? You get this. You get this. Mm -hmm. You get this. Yeah. Right, they're fighting for who gets what. Exactly. Right, and they have not even signed the accord mm -hmm. as yet to date. Mm -hmm. And you know, Guyanese have to really question and, and ask: Do these people really have a plan for Guyana? I, I would know. say no, zero. <laughs> <laughs> are, are they coming with new plans? Because a lot of what they promised w was not even begun to, has not even begun to be implemented by them yeah. you know and we have to talk about their incompetence to even get anything done mm -hmm. that they would have promised you something know? as simple as buying fuel for a pump station is wow. beyond this government yeah something as simple as that and they're, they're Some, feeling to do that as yeah, well I'd, I'd have to go back to the rice farmers again and in region 5 what happened that situation where we had those floodings is as a result of negligence and incompetence yes. again something that started as a minuscule breach ended up uh, miles wide and affecting thousands of families. Yeah. So while, while also, and thanks for bringing that up, Rudy, it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we also have to speak about the corruption under this government because mm -hmm. that, that has been one of the highlights, mm -hmm. I would say, of this government. You know, yeah. it's, it's been four plus years of heavy corruption that has been proven mm -hmm. and tested in the, read, read the audit reports, read yeah. the Auditor General reports, read the Bank of Guyana reports, read the IMF reports, read mm -hmm. the World Bank statistics. You, you will see what is really going on in this country and how the government has mm -hmm. really spent basically all of our reserves and they, mm -hmm. they're putting us heavily indebted to other countries and they're not earning any money for Guyana the at, at this point The public debt is currently at 93.3 billion yes, it is. dollars. That's yes, how much is. Guyana is indebted currently under this government. Um, so our operators are already signaling to us, as you guys are aware, of last program for the year, and we have um, 30 minutes, basically. Yes. So uh, quickly, I'd just like to urge Guyanese to be aware of all the fake news that are being circulated. Coming on to the elections, we'd have a lot of pe persons out there circulating fake news. Um, there was one last night, and I must commend the uh, Guyana Police Force for fast action. Um, someone, uh, some fake profile on uh, Facebook by going by the name of Earl Hamilton saying that uh, the police intercepted some vehicle with a cache of guns and they're believed to be going, uh, and that this vehicle that they intercepted is known to be used by a political, a certain political party and it was going to a certain spot and all, total nonsense, total, total nonsense. And I see a lot of persons sharing this mm -hmm. and asking questions yes. like, oh, what is going on? People trying to kill people in Guyana. Please, guys, do not go haywire. Just verify your sources. Just look, uh, read perfectly. Make sure it's not a fake profile or someone just trying to store. And you'd have a lot of persons out there trying to store racism and stuff and violence and stuff like that. Just please be careful during this election season. Also, um, condolences to all those persons, um, to those families who have lost their loved ones over the past uh, month. Uh, there has been a lot of road accidents. Now we're coming up to the holiday season. And um, i just like to urge all those uh, persons on the road, pedestrians, uh, road users, drivers, please be careful on the roadways. Um, it's very important that you observe all the laws when it comes to the use of the roadways. Um, just be careful during this period, please.
Yes, thank you very much, Rudy. I think that that's very, very important. It's on the mind of a lot of Guyanese people, uh, what's, what's going on at the roadways. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to urge our Guyanese to just be careful. Uh, if you realize that someone cannot drive, uh, just to call a relative, help out a relative. Um, if you realize you're not capable of driving, call a taxi. You know, we have yes. to just do all of these things to yes, ensure sir. that you know, our, our people are not, are not uh, hit with carnage on the road. Yeah. Um, it's a responsibility that all of us have to bear as Guyanese. And I do, please do accept my condolences to get the families of, uh, of those that would have passed away. Uh, you know, Rudy, last week we urged uh, Guyanese to keep a few questions in mind, uh, more so in light of the new promises that are being peddled by the APNU AFC coalition. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know what their track record is on that. Mm -hmm. Um, now, they have broken so many promises, as we have, would have talked about um, in their 2050 manifesto, and importantly, the promises they made to young people in this country. Mm -hmm. um, so we are just asking these questions again of the political parties that are seeking um, your support come March 2020 for you to ask these questions to these political parties. You know, are these poli policies and programs making a difference in the lives of people? Are the policies and programs creating jobs? and sustainable jobs as well? Are the policies and programs generating more income and advancing welfare for the Guyanese people? Are the policies and programs expanding social and economic goods and improving services? And finally, how are the policies and programs impacting the, po the pockets and the bank accounts of our people? Now, I'll just give you three reasons why the PPC uh, should get <laughs> mm -hmm. your vote and why, why the PPC is a clear choice. Number one, it's its record. Number two, it's its vision. Number three, it's its plans. Just read the manifesto mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll get why I, I've pointed this out to you. Thank you, Juan. Very important questions and very good observation where yeah. it comes to the PPP. Um, with that said, we'd just like to thank you all for tuning with us tonight. Um, just a reminder that you can rewatch the program anytime on our Facebook page. You can rewatch any of the programs that we've done throughout this year yes, at any do. time on our Facebook page and share it with your friends and families. This will be our last program for the year. We'll be back in January 2020. Um, reminder that the Mero will be available every Saturday as well, so don't forget to pick up your copies of the Mero newspaper. And to all Guyanese, I'd uh, like, just like to say happy holidays and hope you guys have a wonderful um, New Year's as well. Thank you.